Hey there, this is a little demonstration of the 256 bytes of read-write memory that I've built in the Logic World closed beta. Um, I want to preface this by saying that I know next to nothing about digital logic, so um, while I came up with this largely on my own, uh, much of what I say is guaranteed to not be original, um, so bear with me. Um, all but, like, that stuff, that's the only stuff that, like, I didn't come up with myself, because we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, so it's 256 bytes, which means we have the full 8-bit address space, right? So full byte address, full byte values, right? Um, I think this is the largest, like, normal, in air quotes, normal, um, data size that you can have, like that you could store that, ha and still cover the entire address space. Because the next up is 16 bytes, 16 bits, and that is like 65,000 values, like 65,000 individual um, pods of data you'd have to store, which is, I think, beyond the capabilities of this game on modern hardware. Um, but anyway, we have our, we'll, we'll talk about the design of that in a bit, but let's talk about the interface first. Um, this is not designed at all to be hooked up, well, I mean, you could hook it up, but like, there, the infrastructure is not set up to hook this up to like a CPU or anything, this is human interface here. So this is our address, we have full, full byte of address, um, and we're going to talk about how it addresses to the machine in a bit. Over here is the value that you'd want to put in. Um, if you click this, it writes to whatever byte you have addressed with this value. Um, and then way over here is the output of the current byte you're addressing. So we're at um, 0, which is this one right here. And if I come over here and I go boop, 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 right? Right now we're entirely off. Oop. Now we have that. Now now we have this value. If I, I can move this. This does nothing unless this button's pushed. And you can see we have that, this value that we stored currently visible. Um, if we come up here, as I said, this is the pod that's being addressed right now. And you can see the value. And you can see its neighbors are uninfected. Um, these, are, these are the D latches in the game. Um, these are the actual, these big squares are the actual value that's stored in each pod, right? So this line of squares is our stored value for this pod, and then these here are stored value for this pod, and so on. Um, if I come over here and I address a different byte, you can see now we're addressing, we're still addressing here. Oh no, we changed our Z. Interesting. I'm trying to figure out which pod we're addressing now. So we're no longer addressing... Ah, so we're addressing this one now. Um, and I can come over here and I could put in boop, boop, right, boop, boop. And you can see we currently have that shown. And we come here. We can see that's stored. And we can come over here. And we can address back to the original byte we were addressing. We can see the value. Back to that second byte we were addressing, we can see the value. Um, and while we had this address, we can come over here, we can zero back out. Go back to our original byte. Come over here, zero it out, take that off. Um, the way it works is um, each pod, we have it stacked, so there's one, two, three, four, there's eight. And there's eight, and then it's stacked four high. Um, and eight times eight times four is 256. And we have our, as we have our, we take our input address, and we split it off into a, a 3 to 8, another 3 to 8, and a 2 to 4 um, decoders. And then those values that it decodes become our XYZ coordinates in the grid. So you can see here, um, we're entirely in zeros, we have an, we're at zero address, so that we get our first x, actually 
actually hold on. Yeah, that's x. Uh, that is x, right? Because this is, yeah, because this is y. Um, x of zero. Well, our first x, our first y, and our first z, right? If I come over here and I change this, we're still addressing first x, first y, but second z, um, and all combinations of these are unique. Each, every combination of this gives you a different unique address, um, x, y, z coordinate into the grid, and then each pod um, knows how to communicate to its other pods. I'm going to grab a, a pod real quick. Yeah. Boop. It's going to grab that because I stacked this weird. So this is a single pod. Um, you can see here's here's where we store the data, and we have our these are these right here allow you to place if there are two of these with their blue sides facing each other they connect so you can like take a, a thing and then stack it like in a row and they can connect to each other automatically um, like I said this is this is as I um, as I said multiple times probably not in this video though um, I don't really care about being space compact because I think bigger things look cool anyway so this could be much smaller, and the top wiring is a bit of a mess. Um, and I think this could be a lot better because I realized after I built it that I don't need separate input and output lines for the bytes. Um, but that depends on like how you wire up the writing. Um, so if I you do that, you could probably fit more of these within the same performance limitations of the game because you have fewer components, but um, this save file is about 2.2 megs at the current moment. Anyway, um, this is where all of the magic happens. Um, we have we have our Y address, and you can see um, it, if I, if I point at this Y, you can see all, if I run a, a signal in here, all of the pods in this row would have power on their Y address. And here for the same thing for X, so all the pods in this row would have their X light up. And then we have our Z address here, and this is to choose the layer. And if I fly over here, you can see we have our, our Z address. Comes up here and splits off into each of the four. Um, you look at the, the these bright pink boards um, into each of the four layers. So by doing that, I'm able to tell, if you look here, this is a, a three, three input AND. And this only lights up when all, when the X, Y, and Z coordinates all are on, which means that this pod knows that it is the only one being addressed. And that, if you look at this right here, that enables our, our read, it enables our output, and that becomes the, um, that becomes our um, the value that we get out and like at this point we don't all of it, it runs through all the pods as well um, but that's fine because only one of them is being addressed at a time so we're only getting the output value from them at a time um, and then of course over here we have a, a four-way and which is basically the three-way and but then we have our um, right enable which is right over here our right enable um, and that's what this button over here triggers. So when we were when we were putting in a value to write here, this button right here, if you look where it lights up over there, right, it lights up that line, which goes to the right enable. And when the right enable is powered, um, and that powers all of them all at once, all of them get the right enable powered at the same time. But of course, so when they all get the power right enable line on goes into this and <coughs> excuse me if it's being addressed because it's the same sort of logic as the reading right we have our, our x y and z and then our right if that's the case it comes down here and enables the um, the right peg on these d latches and our input values get written and that's it. Um, there are. I ran into a few issues building this. 
um, primarily um, the game does not have automatic stacking yet so you can't take because I, I built one of these and then um, cloned them a bunch right and, and what you tend to do is you, you go if I grab this again oop I'll grab that oop grab that remove it there we go um, and if you want to say we want to have a 4x4 four four grid of this I don't have to make um, I don't have to make all 16 no it's a lot more than that I say we want to make 2x2 two two. I don't have to make all um, 8 of them I can do boop and I come over here and like attach it and then now I have 2 and I can grow exponentially but the problem is the, the game that would be fine um, but the game has some difficulty in setting up the rotations you want when you're trying to place boards on other boards on weird angles, um, which is being improved eventually soon. Um, and then there's the problem that right now when you, when you place components, like I, I could grab, I could clone, like, th oh, I have to come over here and I could, cl if I grab, if I clone this, oh, it's going to chug. Oh, rip my encoding. Okay. You can see it grabs all of this, right? If I were to place this, uh, my client would crash. Uh, let's delete that. And hopefully my encoding has returned to decent performance. Ugh, that was a bad idea. Um, but if I were to place that, um, all of those components would be placed at once, and they'd all play their sound effect all at once. And the client can't handle that. The, the, the game can't handle that, so shit goes down um and then there's this weird bug where where, where things aren't like this was this bug has been fixed four different times like four or five different times so things aren't lining up correctly but it doesn't affect the operation of the machine um and then we have this weird ab abomination here which is the result of another issue um I did mention I was going to talk about this. Yeah, this is these are the only parts of this machine that I didn't design myself. Um, you can tell because it's all messy because I didn't think about it enough to like actually make it nicer. Basically, this is just like a diagram I pulled off Wikipedia for a um, a two to four decoder, and then I scaled it up to a, a three to eight decoder, and then I just used that. I think that's about it. Um, I. Oh no, I do have um, this wiring back here. Um, this whole mess here is because the all the the all the rights need to be attached to each other, and all the reads need to be attached together. So that's what this does. It's a it's a bit of a mess, but it looks cool. And this is the flash all cells. So if we were to have a bunch of data stored in here, and we wanted to clear it all out. What we could do is we could fly over here. We could set this to zero. And it doesn't matter what we've addressed, we can come over here. And when we hit this, it writes that value to all of the cells at once. And what this, how this works is, is, is it literally just like addresses all of the cells at once. So here, um, I'm using short delayers um, so that um, if you look here, we're currently addressing this whole slice, this whole Z layer, this whole layer of um, pods right now. But if you look, it's it's not propagating down this wire because it's a this is a blot end right here. That's why I'm doing that, and also I'm doing this because the wires bugged me otherwise. Because um, over here, you gotta run over here, and it just didn't line up correctly. Um, what I'm doing is when you hit that, it just addresses all of the layers, if you look over here, it addresses all of these, and you look over here, it addresses all of these, so all of the cells get addressed at once, and then this, and I do this because it just looks cool, nicer, it runs into one of the right enables, which is they're all connected, and all of them get written to. So right now you can see they're all, they're all blank, all of them are blank, they're all, they're all at zero. So we come over here and we go, do, do, no, let's do that, and then that, and then that, right? And we come over here, and hit 
slash all cells. And you can see they are now all have that value. And I can come over here and I can address a specific byte. I have no clue what byte this is. I, I would be able to figure it out, but I don't know off the top of my head. We have that value. And we can come over here and go, oh, no, you're actually have that value now. And we can see we have that. We can address a different one. We have that original value. We address back one. Back to that one. We have that. And we can come over here and we can go boop, 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 turn it all off. See, we still have the value. Come over here, flash all the cells. And you can see they're all off now. And we're back to all of them being at the um, having a value of zero. So that is my 256 bytes of read write memory. Um, I think I'll put a world save in the description. No, because like, the game's gonna lose compatibility with the save at some point before the <laughs> game releases. So, ah, eh, no, why not? Just because data preservation. So I'll put a I'll put a download link to the save file in the description on the off chance that once the game is released, someone can get this loaded again. So, cheers.